Okay, welcome everyone to this continuation about this algebraic geometry, my very biased collection of algebraic geomet geometric topics. Algebraic geometric topics, a mouthful. Um, yeah, so we are almost there. We are almost at the border of kind of classical algebraic geometry and modern algebraic geometry. So sheaves will be uh, up next essentially. But before that, I would like to explain one more, well, actually two more um kind of connections between complex geometry and algebraic geometry and i do that in kind of kind of the, the idea is here is to sell you a few examples of regular functions kind of a class of examples of regular function which behave very much like things you have seen in complex analysis um yeah and that's the whole point so regular functions and kind of regular functions and the main class will be regular functions given by uh, localizations. Well, it's always good to have some backup examples and yeah that's what I'm planning to do uh, in this video. Okay let me kind of briefly recall or recall or mention or define or whatever what uh, non-regular functions are. I hope you remember what regular functions are um, but what localizations are and there's essentially only one example of localization. I mean localization is a general principle so there are a few examples but what i mean is everything is very very similar of this example going from the integers to the rational numbers okay integers to the rational numbers and it works as follows we take a ring and we call this z <laughs> and it's a ring of integers the ring of not quite counting numbers counting numbers are more basic counting numbers is something an animal could understand one two three four minus five is a little bit of a fishy concept but I take uh, minus five here as well. So I take the integers and I take a multiplicatively closed subset of the integers, which is, well, what is multiplicatively closed? Everything except zero, because something times something is zero if and only if one of the one of them is zero, right? Multiplicatively closed really just means, let me write it down. A times B is zero implies, uh, well, let's say A or B is zero. A equals zero, B equals zero, or B equals zero, one of them. Okay, so in particular, if you have non-zero things, it's multiplicatively closed. And then there's this general pr process, which is called localization, where you just throw in the inverses of the elements in S. So you throw in the S inverse things. Um, yeah, and then this localization, well, in this case, they will just be the, the denominators, so the, the rational numbers. This localization always satisfies the usual properties you would expect from the rational numbers. So you get fractions. Essentially, it's the idea of fractions. So maybe the localization is a little bit of a bad name. It should be called fractionization, I guess. Is that actually a word? Who knows? But essentially, you throw in fractions of things you want to invert. But, and then you kind of make everything a little bit easier. So Z is, uh, sorry, Q is easier than Z because now you can invert things, well, except zero. So you can always invert the things that are uh, in your multiplicatively close and yeah so this is a general fun uh, function a general process and what you can think of actually like the rational functions so quotients of polynomials f divided by g um, you can somehow also get them from the uh, polynomials in the following way you take polynomials and the multiplicatively close that is everything let's say which at zero isn't zero or something, and you can, you can invert them, and then they're kind of local in the sense, um, so that's not quite rational. This would be rational functions around zero, uh, so around zero if you want, because I'm just I'm taking out the denominator zero here, at zero here. Um, but anyway, you can define that in a very similar way, of course, for any regular function. And it's exactly the same definition. So now you invert the things that are kind of non-zero around uh, non-zero around zero yeah exactly they're non-zero around zero and you have those polynomials and it's exactly the same process and this whole process is called localization that's why i usually write l for those guys and yeah so here's the formal definition but essentially regular functions remember recall are things of the form f divided by g localizations are things of the form f divided by g or in uh, how I write it upstairs, r divided by s, but it's that's just renaming things. So it's kind of the same, and it turns out that regular functions behave very, very, very much like uh, localizations, 
as I'm going to show you in a second. So let me do it again. So this is kind of the standard localization, the way how to you define the rational numbers from the integers. Um, rational functions is exactly the same idea, potentially around a point, let's say around zero, um, and then just regular functions. Wait, they are just of this form, remember. So they're f divided by zg locally, right? So maybe we should have some relation from the abstract localization um, coming from algebra and this these local uh, regular functions coming from geometry. They're kind of the same thing, right? And yeah, it turns out that they are kind of the same thing in the following way. So you have a, a very large class of examples given by those distinguished open sets. Remember that we want uh, some function from some open set into the ground field. That was the regular function. And yeah, so the distinguished open sets are well, very similar to what we had here, right? That's what I had. That's why I had this condition. So here it's around zero, but you can do that around around the whole variety if you want something that doesn't vanish on a on a given uh, fixed set. Um, and then this is a distinguished open set, and the the local function on this is really just a coordinate ring. So usually write this like this: the coordinate ring localized at f. So you usually write this like this, and this really just means you throw in things of the form g divided by f to the n for some n. So this is my s set here, my inversion set, f, f squared, f cubed, and by the assumption that they don't vanish, um, yeah, so they don't vanish, so you can divide, and then you're, and you're really good. And I again see this as an analogy from kind of complex geometry, so complex analysis, and um, whatever, algebraic geometry. Because roughly regular functions, this is kind of saying that regular functions behave to coordinate functions. So coordinate functions are, let me try to um, actually mark this. Coordinate functions are those guys in red and the regular functions are then the localizations. So they behave a little bit like Laurent polynomials to usual polynomials or Taylor series to Laurent series. So Laurent expansions in in, instead of a Taylor expansion. And we don't remember what a Laurent expansion was. Um, so Laurent polynomial would be something like an X and X inverse instead of just in just an X, the usual polynomials. So you just throw in inverses of X. Again, all powers of X, that's that's a multiplicative closed set. You can throw in inverses, you get Laurent polynomials, and then you can um, evaluate or approximate functions using the Laurent series, which is somewhat better um, in some sense than a power series because now you can include the negative values up to a certain point, which gives you a better way of approximating uh, several types of functions. So in this case, again, kind of regular functions behave very much like, um, yeah, like complex, complex analysis functions. Here's another example. It's not a distinguished open set. It's not a localization, but in my flavor of complex versus algebraic geometry, I really should put in this one as well. So if you have, it's kind of a fun thing in complex analysis, if you have an holomorphic function and it's it's not defined on zero, then you can always extend it to uh, zero. Uh, sorry, to, to include zero as well. You can always extend it to the whole set. Um, something like this. You have you have a, have a graph of a function and it's not defined at a certain point, but you can, as you can see here, you can really just fill in that point. So in some sense, um, you have, have some of those nice singularities. And the same thing is true in complex geometry, uh, sorry, not your right geometry, that, that was an example from complex geometry, complex analysis. And the same is true here, because if we take uh, our variety to be all of space, and we take uh, the open set to just take out zero, then turns out that the regular functions on uh, U are the same as the regular functions on B itself, so you can always extend those guys uh, all the way from U to V, and this is exactly kind of the algebraic geometry version of this holomorphic functions extent uh, type of theorem. Okay, so I think we are set up now and we next time we will go to kind of the first claims of modern algebraic geometry um, in the form of sheaves. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video and I also hope to see you next time.